In life, you have choices, and each choice you make has either a negative or a positive consequence associated to it. And whether the outcome of your life is either good or bad is dictated by those choices that you make. And thus is true here with little hope for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. This is a game all about making the right choices and getting each character you play as alive. There are five main characters that you can play between, each one having their own different personality and different character traits. And each decision you make as each one of these characters gets you one step closer to getting everyone out alive, everyone being dead, or somewhere in between. So without any further ado, let's get right into the review. Alright, so the story is relatively complicated, and keep in mind I'm going to try and keep things as spoiler free as I possibly can, so bear with me if, the, if this story sounds a little bit disjointed. There are going to be three main eras of the story that I'm referring to because the story is kind of complex. There's going to be the witch trial era, there's going to be the 1970s era, and there's going to be the modern era of the story. It'll all make sense when it starts to come together. So it starts off in the modern era where a bus driver is driving a bunch of college students as well as their professor on a field trip and they have to make a detour into this town called Little Hope. And then the bus crashes and then it goes into a dream sequence. In this dream sequence, you take control of a character named Anthony and you meet a bunch of different people in his family at this house. This funny enough takes place during the 1970s era of the story, meaning that it's actually a main part of the story, but we'll get into that later. So there's an accident where the house starts to burn down and you have to try and get everyone out safely, but this is one of the parts of the game where you actually cannot save anyone. Your choices do not matter here. Everyone will die. The only person that you can get out safely is Anthony. This dream kind of seems a little bit weird, but it will make sense at the end. After the dream is over, you then wake up as Andrew, who funny enough looks a lot like Anthony from the dream sequence, but like I said, we'll get into that later. He is woken up after being unconscious for a little while after the bus crash that happened before the dream sequence. So now you're introduced to the other four main characters being Daniel, Taylor, John, and Angela, and these are your main characters that you play as on top of, obviously, Andrew. You have to explore a little hope, but something weird starts happening. Basically, there's this weird fog that surrounds the town, and it's preventing you from walking away from town. And while you're wandering towards town, you start to have these weird visions, and you're starting to see what is the Witch Trials era of the story, where each character has a double, and that double is usually going through some sort of Witch Trial-related issue, like being accused of witchcraft, or fighting against witchcraft, etc., etc., I don't want to say too much as to spoil too much of the story, but basically, all these characters kind of see themselves in a fishy situation, and now they have monsters chasing after them, and they have to figure out how to stop these trials from happening and how to escape Little Hope. But it does kind of fall apart at the end, though. I won't say too much about the ending until the spoiler section of the review, but the ending kind of lacks the big oomph I was really hoping for. Mostly because these games um, highly emphasize the importance of replaying the game to get different endings. But when I saw this ending, it actually kind of deterred me from wanting to go back and play more. Like I said, I'll explain this more in the spoiler section if you want to hear about the spoiler section, but for those of you who don't want to be spoiled, just keep in mind the ending is kind of underwhelming. So I played through this game twice, and each playthrough I actually had very different experiences and very different thoughts, so I'm actually going to get into what I thought of each of my playthroughs right now. So my first playthrough, I actually had relatively conflicting thoughts. I didn't really like the first half of the game. That's mostly because the first half of the game was very, very slow. Because these games emphasize a lot on exploring the environment and finding every secret. So not knowing where the secrets were and everything at first, it led to me wandering around a lot, which usually isn't bad if it has something to kind of keep the game flowing and keep the pace at a pace that's not dead boring. But the first half of the game, it was very much like a walking simulator, which games like Until Dawn and Man of Medan also had the walking simulator sections, but usually there were action segments or the don't move slash heartbeat segments that would usually keep things, you know, at least somewhat suspenseful. But here, there really wasn't much of that. So it led to the first half of the game dragging a bit for me. 
But once we got into the second half, I actually really got into it. I actually did manage to save almost every single character except for one who was Taylor. I got her killed. But there was a lot of suspense, a lot of, you know, wondering like what was going to happen to these characters later in the game. And I really wanted to keep a lot of them alive. So overall, if you're playing this game for the first time, the first half will definitely drag a bit, but once you get into the second half, it will really start to pick up, and it's really good. But like I said, the ending definitely makes things fall a bit flat, in my personal opinion. So my second playthrough was very, very interesting. I had a lot more fun with it because the first half definitely didn't trudge as much, because of the fact that I knew where some of the secrets were, so I didn't have to go and grind and really be slow in the first half of the game. And then of course it led to the second half coming quicker, and it just was overall a better paced experience once I got through that first playthrough. However, it did lead to a problem that I had with the second playthrough that I didn't really notice in my first playthrough. Now again, I did get Taylor killed in my playthrough, but I got her killed in a different way. I was put in a situation where I had to save either Daniel or Taylor. And I chose Daniel because his situation seemed a little more dire. So I went and I saved him and there was really nothing I could do to save Taylor. Now I could have saved Taylor if I grabbed something earlier in the game that I had missed, which is my own fault. That is a perfectly re reasonable explanation for Taylor's death. However, there is another segment to her death that just didn't sit right with me. Right before she was about to die, it zoomed in on her monster and it showed that I didn't unlock certain traits with her. And this is one of the reasons that she didn't survive, because I didn't unlock these traits. The same thing happened at the end, where I had survived until the day, but the house started to collapse. And because of the fact that I didn't unlock John's certain character traits, it got John killed, and there was literally nothing I could have done. Like, at least with Taylor, I could have grabbed the knife earlier, and it gives a solid explanation as to why she didn't survive. But with John, he just stood inside the house and the house collapsed on him randomly. And if I had unlocked those traits, he would have walked outside. So it's not a matter of me doing something that led to John dying. It's me not unlocking certain traits. And that kind of bothers me. I know I talked a little bit about the ending there, but I promise that's the last thing I'm going to say about the ending before the spoiler section. Overall, I definitely did like my second playthrough a lot more than my first, but it did infuriate me a little bit that it wasn't necessarily my choices and actions that led to certain characters dying, but it was the fact that I didn't unlock certain character traits by making moral decisions that usually wouldn't have much impact on the actual story. Alright guys, so if you want to avoid the spoilers, make sure to skip to this timestamp and we'll talk about overall thoughts at the very end. So like I said, click this timestamp and you'll be sent to the end. So now we have reached the ending of Little Hope. So here you see the witch trial of Mary, who is the little girl that you've been kind of following along through the story. Now it is your job as Andrew to tell Abraham whether or not you think the doll should be burned or Mary should be burned. I personally don't know the consequence of that outcome because in my first playthrough I chose the doll to be burned and the second playthrough I chose Mary to be burned. I know it's a bit sadistic to have a child burned but it was mostly to see if there would be any difference in the outcome. But to my knowledge there was really no difference. Anyways, after you have the whole witch trial situation, the game is over. It's all done, there is nothing more you can do. And then everyone leaves the house and that is when you discover that none of these characters exist, none of them are real, except for Andrew, who is actually Anthony from the 1970s era of the story. And Anthony actually also ended up being the bus driver that we saw in the very beginning of the game. Basically, he just kind of went into a concussion and had a schizophrenic spell where he was seeing all of his old family members unaged back from before they died. And this is where things start to get a little bit fishy for me. Yes, it's supposed to symbolize that he is haunted from the traumas of his past, he ha cannot get over the death of his family. But it does, in my personal opinion, make going back and playing it again feel less urgent. Because the whole point of these games, like I mentioned earlier, is that you go back and replay them. But given that all the characters are not real besides Anthony slash Andrew, it just makes you less desiring to go back and play because what's the point of saving everyone if none of them are real anyways? And you can't even get Andrew killed until post-game if you get the worst possible ending, which you would also have to make sure everyone dies and you get the gun. 
so that's already a niche circumstance to get him killed so it makes me personally not care about the character as much if the one person that is actually real in the story cannot get killed until post game i mean personally i don't have a problem with the ending itself i think the ending is relatively interesting seeing how anthony is struggling with his schizophrenia how he's seeing his his whole family and all that and trying to get over their deaths it's really interesting to see that but the fact that this is a video game that is meant to be replayed and that it's meant for you to go back and try to save all the characters, personally it leads me to feel not as attached to the secondary characters. And plus it kind of does what Man of Medan did, it makes everything not real. Which for a first time isn't bad with Man of Medan, but then it does it again in Little Hope where nothing is real, it just kind of makes the threat feel a little bleh. And then it makes me think, alright, with House of Ashes, which is the next game in the Dark Pictures Anthology, it makes me wonder if that's all going to be fake, if anything in there is going to be real, and if it's not, then what's the point of going on? And I really hope that this is something that they address with House of Ashes and make it so that there is an actual threat and that these people's lives are actually in jeopardy so that you do feel an incentive to actually rescue them. Like, even in Man of Madon, there was that sense of you want to rescue these people because, yes, even though the threat was, was not real, the people there actually were, and they were actually a threat to each other, so you wanted to try to make the decision so that no one would get hurt and that everyone would get out alive. But here, it doesn't matter what choices you make. It doesn't matter who lives and who dies, because at the end of the day, the outcome is you are just Anthony. The only thing you really affect is if he goes to jail, if he kills himself, or if he just walks away. It's really weird, but I mean, I don't hate the ending, like I said. I think it's a good ending for a story, but for a video game that's meant to be replayed, I think they shouldn't have gone this approach. Overall, I think Little Hope is probably better than Man of Medan in the aspect that A, it runs better, it's just, graph it's just better in every regard in terms of performance, at least from what I've played on the Xbox. And I do thoroughly enjoy the story more, I even kind of like the characters a bit more. There seem to be a little more depth of these characters than in Man of Medan. I feel like they spend a lot more time on this game than Man of Medan. But this game definitely does not reach the expectation that a game like Until Dawn had set. I would personally give this game probably a 7 out of 10. It's really good, it's solid in a lot of regards, but there are just a lot of little things that kind of bug me about the story and about the characters in terms of their depths and the overall outcome of the story. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All the stuff down below. Make sure to click the notification bell so you're notified of when I upload videos. And make sure to check out the merch store. There's some cool Zach Pack merch up on there. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.